joined today <laughs> in person. Let's go. Not over the phone, not over the computer. Yeah. It's been a while. And you're in our show. house. And yes, so I, I came to your domain. But um, D1 Rejects here on campus at Alma College. Coach Couch joining me today in a fitting setup, if I do say so myself. <laughs> sure. um, but just so excited and, and thankful for you having us here. This has been a great experience so far. Still got some other stuff to wrap up. But um, the hospitality and, and everything from you guys and accommodating us has been fantastic. I, I can't thank you enough, man. It's been well, great. Well, it's our pleasure. And, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm so happy that you reached out and we were able to make this work. And, yeah. um, you know, I wanna, I'm want i going to flip it, right? Okay. I'm flipping the roles. I like I, that. I'm asking you first, right? Can you see why I, you know, love being here and who I'm working with? I think so. I think I see it from a couple different perspectives. The one obvious one is is you get to show off your program, right? And and for me, like coming in and we kind of talked about it earlier and we're eating over at your place, which in itself is is just awesome. But getting the sense of, hey, you get to be around these guys in a capacity that isn't on your show and isn't on the sideline during a game. And you get to get that real authentic sense of what this program is about. And also you get to put a bunch of your guys in, in front of the camera and have them speak about it. They're their real experience with this program. So that for me is like, the long-winded answer. Right. Another one is like you and I have a good relationship, and so for you know for us to to be able to come back and do this years later, I think at least from my perspective is is yeah. special and like a Even relationship. Even though you like broke that. my heart years ago, you yeah. know it's okay. I'm I'm over it, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> this all you know this all started for you at least mm-hmm. when it comes to when it comes to coaching this team, but uh, in, in many ways in a compliment from your wife on your kneecaps when you were asking <laughs> about uh, yeah. whether or not it's, to wear the, the kilt only, yeah, the only on the sidelines. The only attractive part of my body apparently <laughs> is the kneecaps. And so we've come, I mean, such a far away from that, from a from a compliment to now. No, but we're going to check yours out later and, and maybe a kilt. <laughs> yes. so we'll get you in once. We'll see if my kneecaps uh, stack up well against yours. But, you know, to come from, from that point of – like you had talked about before in an episode, I believe it was 86 of D1 okay. Rejects, which feels like forever ago. Um, but also feels like yesterday uh, in the fact that having that conversation feels so fresh in my mind. You had talked about being so nervous for that first game, and it was an away game. And so now committing to home games of, of wearing the kilt and yeah. that mindset. Yeah, actually, how that's the first grown. one was a home game. Oh, it was a home yeah. game. Okay. So the very first game was away. Okay. And uh, we weren't on the good side of that one. Yes. Um, and then the next game. The yeah. home opener, the, the first straight of my my time as a head coach mm-hmm. here, and I was going to break out the kilt. Yeah, so quite, it was awesome. Quite nervous. Yeah, I, I believe it, and you know, for a lot of different ways. And we had talked before about you know how that could be perceived right now. It can maybe comes off as as corny or from the wrong reasons, but being around you, being around these guys, you know it. That's not the case, and it's for the right reasons. The guys obviously bought into it. Your coaching staff is is behind that and behind you in every way, shape, and form. But now to go from you know, being this this new head coach and being nervous about those kind of things. Not that you don't still get the butterflies before game day, but now we're talking about a team that has these national expectations and a team that has gone and done what a lot of people would deem to be the impossible uh, this last year and the year prior. And you go back to back in the conference and you beat teams into the playoffs. You have your first playoff win in program history. Then you go and do it in the later rounds against a squad like Mount Union and you just 24-point dogs and come out. It's just... For me, this this full circle moment and and just is really neat to to come back and have this conversation with you after all of that, um, and to see and to feel what it's like to be a Scott and to be here today. I think is just special overall experience. Well, thank you, and it, it is something special, and I, that's what brought me back here. Um, life uh, back in Romeo, my hometown, and where I was teaching coaching was was very comfortable yeah. you know um it's where i grew up it's where family is it's the only place that my boys had ever known and so to ask them to to pack up and leave um this was the only place that i would have you know made that ask mm-hmm. and uh thankfully they said yes and you know here we are and i've got two on the team and um it's so much fun that's awesome. It's incredible. And we'll, we'll talk about the trip to Scotland and you being able to suit up with that eventually here. But going on that note of being comfortable, right? Coaching is not a profession one would associate with that word. I think in any sense, right? And we talked about earlier, you know, how many coaches get to pick and choose, one, where they go, but then two, how they go out, right? When they when it becomes their time to, to leave the profession and how many of it is their choice in a, in a profession, in an industry that is so production-based 
and a lot of other words, I guess you could probably use along that lines, but to be a football coach, to be in athletics, you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable, right? I mean, would you agree with that? Yeah. I, so there's, there's different ways to perceive being comfortable. Yeah. I am comfortable here. This absolutely. Is, oh, is yeah. this, this I hope is, so, man. I this mean, just yeah. feels good yeah. to be here. Right. I, I hadn't been on campus since last Friday, uh, <laughs> with some camps and a, a charity fundraiser for veterans, uh, golf outing, which, you know, they just I'm glad I glad to give them my money. You know, absolutely. Uh, there absolutely. was no performance on my part, but, go. um, but then just to be back this morning, it's like, ah, yeah, this feels good. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but then there's also don't get comfortable with where you're at in terms of success or anything yeah. like that. Satisfied. Like, yeah. I don't know where, where I read it, who told me it, no idea. Right. But, uh, but it stuck with me. And that is if you got fired today, what would you do different yesterday? Mm. And so right now, I would say I, I there's right. I don't think I'm getting fired today, right? Yeah, but, well, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you keep that in mind. Of don't ever get complacent. Don't get, you know, you can be happy about things, but don't ever be satisfied. Type mentality and why we go to last week, uh, coaching staff and I were five camps in four days, and yeah. you know, this week we're going to a bunch more to to go see potential new recruits. Mm -hmm. Right, that time and, of year got to work you got to grind it and uh because winning's fun and nobody likes to lose but man hate it exactly and this actually was a, a topic that i wanted to bring up later but it feels natural to bring it up now in that failure and, and learning from failure whether it is at a coaching position or i guess i'm going to kind of focus on the, the student athlete perspective it feels like today young people and i group myself i'm not speaking down on i group myself very much in this category in that young people are so afraid to fail because it feels like people again i group myself right into this it's broadcast everywhere right if you if you fail if you're not good at something if something that is pushed out and published and broadcast to every channel imaginable and everyone can potentially see those failures and so it feels like for me and i had this conversation with a couple of different people that young people today are so afraid of that failure and they may be kind of going to their shell and they don't have those opportunities where student athletes, especially at the college level, not only can they fail, they have to, and they're going to. And so it feels like in an environment like a college football locker room, a field, a game, practice, scrimmage, whatever it is, we're being forced as someone who's gone through that, you have gone through that. And now on the other side of it, you're being forced to go through those and learn from that. And I think it all comes back to being comfortable while uncomfortable. And so learning from those those failures and things is just for me is football is becoming more and more of of a place that is separated from the rest of society in that regard. And it's not a bad thing. I just think there are certain characteristics and things you learn on a football field, on a basketball court, in a swimming pool, in a tennis, whatever that is, yeah. ice rink, that, you know, as student athletes they're they're being opened those doors and those learning opportunities because they have to. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, for example, I'll take our defense, right? Nobody is going to critique a defensive back for going for a ball, not getting it, and then the the opponent you know, catches and yep. potentially probably yeah, takes scores, one right? But I want you to be aggressive. Might also be why we've been right up there at the top with in the country with turnovers is we let them. Don't, don't be afraid to. Go for it, right? And mm -hmm. so celebrate it in, in practice. And they celebrate an awful lot on the turnovers, but go ahead and give the kid a, a kudos for making that effort and not because the easy thing to do is sit back safe. Yep. Yeah. I'm there for the tackle and it's a 20 yard gain down the field. Mm -hmm. ah, go for it, man. Like, yeah, it's a game. And that's right. easy for you to, to say, obviously, because, you know, we talked with your with your guys all day and that this program, this culture, this family is built on relationships. That's 100%. the word that comes up, you know, every coach, every person you ask, and it's genuine, right? Being around it is genuine and, and knowing people who have come through this program, who are currently in this program, it is genuine. But what does that look like? And I think... And the broader question is every college football team talks about family. And yeah. I'm using air quotes because it's the biggest buzzword Absolutely. in football. What does family mean to you? What does it mean to be a part of the Scott? Yeah, almost got family here. Um, I, I truly believe that, like probably every coach has said, that the foundation of what we are 
is built on the relationship piece, right? Kilt style. It's on the gear. Mm -hmm. It's on our wall as you see it in graphics. So people know kilt style. More people know kilt style, but what they don't know, and we have it in pillars, right? Kinship, integrity, love, tenacity. But the pillars are held, held up, excuse me, by a foundation. And the number one bit of the foundation is relationships. If we don't build strong relationships, then I don't think the success is here. Mm -hmm. The transfer portal, we, we would have blew up the transfer portal had we not built relationships. Yeah. Kid leaves, wants to leave, it it hurts. Like It's like, why, man? What's wrong? With, Absolutely, like, yeah. Don't you feel like you fit in if they don't? And man, it should. It should hurt, right? Because you, you, if you, you, if you are a program, exactly, if you are a program that prides themselves on creating relationships, when you lose that person, it's like right. you've put effort into this as well, right? It's a two-way street. And, um, yeah, in most cases, a lot of people are very quick to understand the student-athlete side of things because, especially in big college football, those relationships maybe are different from institution to institution. But at this level okay. where it is potentially more intimate in that way where you you are developing those relationships with these guys, to have one leave, that would be, be gut-wrenching. Yeah. Uh, and we've been very fortunate. Uh, this past year we had – two young men in the portal, but both of them played four years, got their Alma College degree, and uh, sniffing to see if they have an opportunity to, for a master's to be paid for. And one for sure has done that. Um, and I think Coach talked about him in the, in the weight room transforming his body. But, you know, Hunter Sanderson's going to play for Ball State. And, man, I tell you, when we get in from our game, I'm going to probably be the first to look up, see how they did. and That's awesome. Um, yeah, I love the kid and, Absolutely. Uh, and his family. So it was a hard decision. That's what's funny. Like, he he had a – we met, and he talked about praying over it for, for days of, does he take a full ride part of a um, master's or come back and play here for his COVID year? And it's kind of like, Hunter, <laughs> You're getting, you know, whatever it comes out to, twenty, thirty thousand, yeah. whatever dollars. But the fact that, that was a hard decision, right? Like yeah, it's, yeah. And because he he was here when, you know, we we weren't winning the championships, and he contributed to helping us <clears> win. <throat> and he's got that. He, I mean, and then he would be our biggest fan if if we do, mm -hmm. you know, push it to that next level, which is obviously a goal. Absolutely. And the retention is another word that's been thrown around, at least in the last couple of years. You guys have lived it. And when you look mm -hmm. at, I think your defense as a microcosm of that last year, I believe at one point it was like 11 seniors yeah. on the field. And, you know, that you don't see that very often. 11 right. true seniors, right? right? Guys are homegrown guys, in, you know, in, in the sense of college. And I'm saying they're all from Alma, Michigan, yeah. right? But those guys, keeping them here in that retention, not just of individuals, but classes, right? And yeah. keeping those groups together throughout their multiple years and on to graduation and then potentially beyond for guys who went through COVID and had that fifth year. What has the strategy been like from you guys? But it, it, I guess the question really is, is it as complicated as – at all, or is it really just go back to relationships? I don't think it's complicated, but it's work, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and time. Um, and our coaches here, man, uh, bless their their families, right? They mm -hmm. they understand, but at the same time, there there's a mix, right? That I think it's important. It's so important. Coach Ettinger has his kids are and his wife are in the end zone, and they've got suckers after uh, Wednesday game yeah. practices, right? Yeah. And kids walk, guys walk by and they get a suck. And now they're interacting with a, with a four year old and a two year old. And I mean, they're what great mentors for those young little Ettingers, but mm -hmm. also at the same time, our guys see the dad side of coach E and you know, what taking care of your family. And so that's a mix, right? You're, you're, Missing out on some time at home, but if you can blend it, it makes it even better. Yeah. Right? My kids are older, but when I coached high school, it was the same thing. Guys come over to the house. They see me interact, or they take them, you know, my younger, when they were younger, take them out back, shoot hoops, or, you know, kick mm -hmm. ball, or whatever it might be, right? That's, I think that's very important um, because, you know, that's the next phase of, of their lives. Is, yeah career, family, so forth. Yeah, and I think, yeah, it comes back to having mentors in place and having other people here that, for those guys coming through your program, like, why would you want to 
even get away from that. It feels like you're setting them up here to have that great environment, that great support system, right? That you can't promise anywhere else. And yeah, there are other great programs that do a lot of yeah. these things as well. And they do things very well, but you guys have a system here. It seems that <clears throat> that works in that way of trying to set people up and give them, like you talked about great examples, great role models while flipping the coin on them and saying, Hey, yeah. remember you are also currently acting in that role. And so there's a lot of pride um, and, and responsibility. I think that comes with wearing that a on your chest. Talk yeah. about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, just to, to kind of finish that, uh, retention piece and, and whatnot and relationships is our toughest class of recruiting, meaning brought in the fewest and it was it was hard for us, was COVID. Yeah, I right? believe it. And they are now seniors. It's our <clears throat> smallest class, uh, that one smallest that we brought in, smallest, you know, it was because, and it goes back to, we couldn't meet in person. Um, I tried to zoom and recruit and I was quarantined 28 days because of contacts and whatnot yeah. in my home as they're in my office. And that's just not us, right? No. That's not what, how you, you build relationships through no. a computer. Right. Um, so then the next year we're like, okay, this is, this is a critical recruiting class for us and they're going to be juniors. We brought in the largest class that we brought in, um, I think mid to upper 60s. Wow. Probably in part class. to compensate for, you know, the year before. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But there are going to be, there are 53 seen, juniors left out of that class. So that's, that's upper, like upper 70% on the team. And in school, it's mid 90% that are still students in school. But, the, you know, for us hoping that wow. they all 53 say to have a graduating class of 53. That's unheard of. Oh my gosh. Parent, I mean, parent oh my night God. is going to be, <laughs> we're going to start three hours earlier, just read names. You know? I mean, any level of football that's unheard of when you talk about division three and you know, there's sometimes people question the need for sports, the D three level, because uh, I think the one thing that comes back to it, I, I agree You're with you. Firing me up, man. Yep, I know I'm, I'm going to get going down that road, but you know, people question it because of expense. Right, and there's a lot of schools. I think you look most recently, Birmingham Southern is a great example of, you know, schools that for whatever reason didn't handle their funds correctly and now find themselves in the red. And um, athletics are a big expenditure, but I don't think people understand that money and athletics in a lot of ways are what keeping these are keeping these schools alive. I'm not saying that's exactly how Elmas work, and I just no, you know what I mean. Like you, along those lines, right. when you bring in those many kids and you give them a reason to buy into a school, to a place, to a culture and those kind of deals, even for the ones who aren't sticking with your team that are still bought into this university and going to finish out their education here, the impact you have on the young men, but also on this campus community, I think that, that speaks volumes. You know, I, I, when I was a high school student, I can remember back that far, <laughs> right? You were about to say it. I saw it. Uh, um, but I remember coming here and visiting and, yeah, campus was nice, and yeah. I, I enjoyed it. And yep, I'm going to get an education and, and I'll be a teacher someday. And but it's when I sat down with Coach Cole, senior, not, mm -hmm. not yep, Scotty yep, yep. Cole, because uh, but a senior who was my head coach. It was like I want to play for this guy. Then I got here. Then I truly fell in love with the school too, right? And and I would have been in that boat had I had an injury or whatever. Yeah, at some point decided. Football can't do it anymore. Um, probably what I asked, you know, to stay on as a student coach or mm -hmm. something uh, to learn under him, but I would have stayed here. And that's for some, for many, um, not just football, but other sports. Yeah, it's the get you here, but then hopefully, right, you found that this is good peop good place with caring people, and and our guys have. And I think it's important to us though to recruit. We want you, I think Coach P said, we want you here at least three times. Yeah. Right? Come back. Keep coming back. I mean, we've had some, like six, seven. It's like, but okay, are, yeah. are you been earning credit already? I mean, <laughs> I see you more than my wife. Like, <laughs> um, But he wants to make sure it's the right fit. Yeah. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. it's not a, and, and we don't treat it like, well, if you don't like it, you can move, to, you know, transfer. No, we want you to, to love it here and this be the right spot. 
And we're going to buy into you too, right? Yeah. And you've got a group of coaches too that, I mean, a lot of them have so many connections and ties to this place, the one you had just mentioned, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to have a staff of guys who all went through that and to preach that to this, you know, whatever group comes in next, I feel that just feels like such an easy connection and a way to get all those guys bought in. Well, I'll tell you what, I tell my AD and president all the time, like our success is, yes, players, obviously, but assistant coaches, consistency. Um, right after uh, 2022 championship game, we came down here and um, took a, a photo of the, the spouses, the coaches, and then all of us. And then 2023, we get back from a road victory to, to clinch the championship. Again, spouses, coaches. Those two pictures are almost identical. That's you know, and, and yeah. to keep the coach retention there is, is, is huge. Yeah, it is. And again, this is all... This is not the usual in college athletics. And once again, in an industry and a profession that is so tied to just move, you almost have to accept the fact that, hey, it could be uprooted, family and, and whatever, everything yeah. else, and just and move across the country in a matter of weeks, which, yeah. is, which is ridiculous. But um, let's let's kind of move over and talk, uh, not necessarily last year when it comes to football, but how about this spring and uh, <laughs> and the trip? Yeah. That you guys, I, I will just set you up. I'll just, I'm going to lay that one up for you. And I want you to, I want, yeah, I want you to, was that a spike? Was yeah, it a dunk? Or? Yeah. Is it called the spike still? I don't know. Uh, yeah. But take it from there. Talk me through your guys' trip to Scotland. And, and we had talked before you guys had went back on that episode way back when, but now to come back and talk retroactively about it, retrospectively, yeah. I think is the word. But uh, tell me about that experience. Yeah. So the planning um, was a lot more than I thought, mm-hmm. right? Um, we had interest from a lot more than I thought, which made – the planning even greater, but uh, it in the end it went so smoothly that all that planning and I'm talking tens of hours of um, we had 181 people travel, so we we're on three different planes, we're in four different buses. You got to feed them, and you got to house them, and you got oh, got to know who's in what room and uh, who's yeah on what bus, and you know planning all that right absolutely. But uh, so. We, uh, the, the, the worst thing going in or at first was, man, one, one group, myself included in that group, we were having a 12 hour layover in Frankfurt, Germany, man, this is going to be terrible. Right. But then the company that I was working with, um, provided us with a couple of tour guides. So we were able to go through Frankfurt, Germany for, you know, six, seven hours, see, that city, uh, at least a glimpse of it. Yeah. Um, and then we got back in, in enough time in the airport to, to travel to Edinburgh. It's awesome. Um, Edinburgh, uh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely the old, and then there's some new parts of towns, but the old and, um, you know, you're walking up an alley that isn't much wider than, than this couch here. Yeah. And, uh, oh, here's a pub and, I may have went in once or twice, but, uh, you know, it was built in 1474 or something like yeah. that, right? Just yeah. how cool is this? It's incredible, um, yeah. So we spent several days there and, and then traveled over to Glasgow, uh, which is a much more industrial, modern city. Um, still a lot of sightseeing, some history certainly in there. We're in a cathedral that was... Uh, built in 1179, I believe it was, Man, right? Yeah. The stained glass and everything's just gorgeous. Um, but that's also where it was close to the stadium. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, we. Uh, I was a little, what I was nervous about is we had prep for the game certainly before we left, but we left on a Sunday. We didn't play till the next Saturday. Mm-hmm. When we were separated a couple groups, a couple guys, um, by hotels, we end up. I mean, we saw each other, but we're not, it wasn't convenient to practice again. So, all right, well, let's see how, uh, see how we oh, a up. week or ten days off goes. And we got there very, very early and uh, got our lungs in us and and all that stuff. Um, you know, f- first half, uh, they the other team, East Kilbride Pirates. Let me tell you, yeah. they before were, you get into the oh. game, I want to at least. You know, you notice when I ask you to just to tee up this trip and talk about it, football is the last thing you get to, right? You know, and I think that's important. Like the trip was, you know, as advertised, it's an American football team going over to play uh, the American football, you know, equivalent over there in Scotland, the the best team, right? As far as yeah. their that age and that area, right? And 
that's kind of always advertised because it makes it kind of makes sense. You're going over there to play football games. It's our tradition, our history. But when you talk about it, the first thing that comes to your mind is not the game itself, right? It's about the journey and it's about getting guys over there. And it's the the team building. That is, I mean, those guys spending that. So there's two groups of we are all together, but one week committed to one week of travel and then two weeks of travel. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, I've heard many. Players like, man, I never would have hung out with them this much, but this was great. Absolutely. Like, heck yeah. And and you're putting your phones down, right? You're not you're you're just enjoying being out there yeah. together. Actually being present. Yeah, yep. imagine that. And yeah. so yeah, the game was everything revolved around that day, the planning. Of yep, of course. But no, that's not what in my opinion it was about. And we had talked uh, you know, you had some of the stuff of, of going over there before and uh, when you had studied abroad and like catching a train over and uh, swimming with Loch Ness. Oh, yeah. Even, you had said that um, potentially getting all the guys to go we jump in. We didn't get an opportunity, man. Uh, it was a bummer. Um, that is too bad. Yeah, it is. Um, so you could all be called crazy Americans instead I know. of just you. It was, um, <laughs> yeah, bloody, bloody Americans. Bloody it Americans. was what I was called. <laughs> um, it would have been interesting. It had it. Little secret here, okay. Right, yeah. Just between here, me and you, of course. Right? <laughs> uh, there were other people on the bus, meaning some alum, some parents, mm-hmm. grandparents, yep. so forth. Um, I I didn't feel comfortable asking the driver to stop, and then knowing we would all kind of in our homemade swimsuits, yep. so to speak. You yep. know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Had it just been football, yeah, we probably would have cannonballed in. You know. <laughs> That so. is that's incredible. Any golf played out there with those guys? I know you're talking about many the courses. did. Yeah, yeah, many many players did. They we had a few, uh, you know, sprinkled in here and there were days off, so mm-hmm. to speak. Explore on your own. A um, lot of tour guided tours, but uh, some went over and played. Uh, I I did a. They have an 18 hole putt putt. Okay. On St Andrews, it is. Literally, the guys that tee off on one are walking right next to you as you're, yeah, you know, putting. Around, yeah, but you know, there's hills on it, and I mean, it was fun. It was a blast, <laughs> right? Um, what a cool spot. I mean, here we are, right? The yeah. the home of golf and all the history around, and walk into uh, a, a pub right there that's got Tiger's hat and many others, right? Very cool, and yeah. Signed and yep. just the history is is phenomenal. Absolutely. And, you know, going back to – I stopped you before you got to the yeah. game because I wanted to talk – that was that was important for me. But talk about the game itself, right? Because that is – like you said, everything revolved around this game. Yeah. That was like the the catalyst, you know, to get this thing going. And a quote-unquote reason, right? Even yeah. though we know that wasn't the real thing that you get out of it, but the quote-unquote reason for this trip and everything. Continue to, to, yeah. to break me through that one and talk about that so, experience. you know, um, we, we say, we tell our recruits, we tell their parents – Scots travel very well, and uh, what it means is parents are just as bought in as, as you know the players are, and um, it held true. We had uh, 150 people that had come over to um, be at that game, Holy right? Cow. And not all within our troop trip, excuse me, um, but there were quite a few that just booked their own and then did a, a trip around one alum. Wanted to do a, a trip with his mom and planned their own route, but that day made sure they were going to be in, in Glasgow and and come watch the Scots, and so just sweet, right? Yeah. So uh, we got there early. We're, we're warmed up and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. As we're doing so, their their players, their team were coming in, and and we gave our guys. I mean, we were very early, so we gave our guys a break, and instantly the intermingling. I yeah. mean, just they love these guys love American football. Yeah, they have, and to. they just want to talk about it because. The, I don't want to say they're outcasts, but they're they don't go with the norm over there, yep. right? So they're not playing soccer, rugby, and and snooker, whatever you know. I watched a lot of snooker when we go okay. eat somewhere, and it's like I don't get this, right? <laughs> it's kind of like cricket. That's I'm great. never gonna figure this yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they don't do the, the play the typical, but uh, they love it, mm-hmm. and some start um, at. at you know, now they they are starting to have some younger, even flag, which is really cool. Very neat, yeah. And what the head coach told me, 
they're getting more now that guys that played they're getting their kids involved a little bit earlier. You get the spider so, web kind of effect. Yep, now yeah. you're into like second generation. He goes, yeah, now I'm starting to get heckled from the, you know, because they understand the game and, you know, they wanted a certain play called. That's them. a whole like, other can There worms. you go. Yeah, now you're good. into the real. Now you you're know? really into American football. You <laughs> yep. get that. That's good. Yep, but, the um, armchair quarterback. <laughs> then, yep. Yeah, but to, to go back to the alumni, right, yeah. and that alumni base and, and you being an alum and a lot of these guys, <laughs> you know, being alum, how has that, alumni base and this just culture how has that grown from your playing days to now and I know it's not an easy question to summarize in short but try to encapsulate that for me yeah uh, that has been one of the joys of taking this this position is I certainly knew the guys around when I played right yeah, and then course. heard uh, uh the stories of yeah, yeah this guy or that guy and and then I got a chance to meet them and um, and then older generations, and then the the in betweens. I mean, there was there were some years I'd always cheer from the Scots, but you know there were years where I'm coaching high school, and then my boys are playing flag of their own on mm-hmm. Saturdays. Yep, so yep. it was tough for me to get here, um, but um, to to then connect with that group in the middle right um, has been tremendous. And what. You know, you saw some of our facilities, the weight room and the oh, yeah. new indoor that, you know, a, a bulldozer almost ran you over. But uh, <laughs> no, that is, those things come from our, our alums, oh, right? Yeah. I mean, they are passionate about Alma and they want to see Alma succeed as much as anybody. Um, and they, they fund those. And, and Alma does a great job. And all the, all the dollars are raised before you know, they break ground. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it allows for the prosperity of the college. Um, look where we're sitting, right? Yeah. The guy Takes over my right shoulder there, Larry Andrus, uh, converted, you know, th- his generosity helped convert this old racquetball court that when I went here, um, into some pretty phenomenal, these are uh, great, coaches yeah. offices and suites. So, Absolutely. and he dedicated that in honor of, uh, coach Cole for his 20 years of, of coaching here who's maybe over that shoulder on, yeah. on the wall. Yep. Uh, a nice alumni wall there you that go. we have. Yeah, that's incredible. It is, and it's yeah. doing it the right way, and you talk about that fundraising. And to kind of wrap up on the, the Scotland trip, I know yeah. this is something that we had talked before. You had hoped you know, and planned to, to make this a once-every-class yeah. type of situation. That's Is that still the goal moving yep. forward? I'm in. Absolutely. Um, I'm telling you, that our biggest issue, yeah, we, quote had, unquote, yep. we had one – player that was five minutes maybe late for a bus going to a different site you guys killed it not bad you guys killed it. not bad so right? and then when it comes to that so it makes all that planning worth oh, you're like absolutely. okay yeah let's do it again because then you, you 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 do all the planning up front and you yep. go there and that's when you can have fun right that's when that's how you create yeah. those opportunities everybody had fun i was a little nervous still every time i'm sure and, especially yeah. being your first time right so yeah. now i imagine when you go back here in a couple of years whatever that looks like then that might be a different trip for you or maybe you know you got this under your belt once and you can just kind of maybe lay back and experience a little more not that you haven't but um as far as the fundraising for that goes talk about the challenges with that uh, obviously there's going to be some type yeah. of out-of-pocket expense oh, for yeah. these guys but you try and minimize that you know because it's You want it to be just a team thing? Yeah, so, uh, you know, our our, um, alumni golf outing, uh, last couple years some funds have gone towards that. Um, We're able to try and keep the cost. uh, You know, it it was still way out of a pocket expense, right? Yeah, of course. International travel. The players also had an opportunity to to fundraise of their own. We gave them a couple opportunities. So some chose to do it um, and drastically reduce that cost, and then others – um, you know, we're able to, to pay for it themselves. Um, and so knowing that we're going to do this again in four years, uh, we'll, we'll be able to tell our players like, look, we are doing this. Here's your opportunity that you're going to be able to, to fundraise before then. And Hey man, you work hard enough, make this trip free basically. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And, it's a goal. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're committed to it. Hey, yeah, I'm already, I made a whole bunch of notes, right? Because you're going to learn from doing it the first time and yeah. how long we travel, where we stay, and all those things. So Absolutely, man. And now going into – Let's play. Let's yeah. talk about playing. 
boy. I love it. I love it. Um, you know, going into year seven for you, yeah. correct? As the head, the head man. Yeah. Now we didn't talk about the game game though. No, we didn't. So the he's Scot- Kilbride. Yeah, the Scots, the American Scots. I was just uh, saying, there's a couple. We had to start saying Go Elma, or at least I did, <laughs> right? Because we're always Go Scots, Go confused. Scots, Go yeah. Scots, right? So I yell Go Scots, and they turn their heads like you know. Um, and so Go Elma, um, and uh, you know, it was it was very lopsided in, in yeah. terms of score. Yeah, the score. Um, tell you what, they had a kicker that had a foot on him. He had a. A nice, I think, 45-yarder that yeah. he put through. So Sent over a couple of recruiting letters. <laughs> yeah, I think he might have been 35 or something. <laughs> you know. um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, 70, what was it, 74 to 3. Yeah. Uh, guys played some different positions. Yeah, well, yeah. Let them have some fun, and you know, I certainly had fun. And, yeah, that we talked about, you know, last time, like, are you going to suit up? And yep, I said, that's, that I, was the last I, I think piece, I yeah. will. And, uh, I didn't chicken out, man. I was Good. tempted. I was five for, snaps, you said? Yeah, I think it was about five. About five. Yeah. One was a PAT. We'll still call it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you being out there with your two two sons at the same time, correct? Three sons. Three. Yeah. But um, so that's phenomenal yeah. so one play in particular and i got a photo of it it's kind of funny it doesn't make me look good trust me uh but uh i was i was trying to go block the, the next level go block a linebacker oh, i gosh. trip over a d tackle's foot right i flop and roll on the ground and uh and my son's there's a picture he's like picking me up patting me on the back you that's know awesome. like that is so yeah, great. good try, Dad. You know that's so great. But uh, what a yeah, moment, though. The the one time, like why I did it. Um, w- one was having fun with our guys, right? Yep. They knew they they had fun watching me, laughed at me, and I'm all good with that, right? It's oh, all yeah. good and fun. Uh, but it was a pass play called, and which Coach Ritmo was only supposed to call pass. Like I can get in the way of somebody for two seconds, like just only quicks. And so he called the pass. I've got my left hand on. My son's got his right hand on this defender. And I'm like, this is pretty cool. You know, he and I are blocking this guy together. So in the next play, he calls a counter. And I'm like, and we're pretty quick tempo. And, you know, I'm. it's different. When you're on the sideline, yeah. calling plays fine. Yeah. But then, oh, wait, he wasn't supposed to. Man, he no. called the counter. Guard's pulling. I got blocked back. I swear that guy was like 10 feet away. But <laughs> so I go to step back. <laughs> He wasn't there anymore, right? <laughs> He's gone. He lights up our running back, causes a fumble. Liability. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I felt so bad. Oh, my goodness. Um, but I got the tackle. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, after the fumble. After the fumble. Tracked him down. That I caused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I horse collared him, actually. So, <laughs> shh. Um, again, that's just between us. But, um, oh, that's good. Yeah. I got a tackle on the day. Not good. No. That Not is... Good. Like you said, though, like that experience, the, like yeah. The funny part is the whole sidelines laughing, right? Oh they yeah. They know I totally whiffed on my oh, block, yeah. right? And our our tight ends coach Matt Yunker didn't see that, didn't? And he's like, "What are you guys laughing about? Our kid just got smoked and caught and, and fumbled." And they're like, "We know." And they're like, "He's like somebody missed their block," and they're like, "It was Coach Couch." He's like, "Oh, <laughs> you know." That is like, this is not something that. I mean, most coaches, most dads, like, you're almost <laughs> no, never going to have nine years yeah. old, man. There's a reason <laughs> that you don't play. I hurt the rest of the trip, you know. But so um, after the game, um, <laughs> their team, fittingly, is uh, sponsored by a local bar. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. So, we might need to bring that over to the, the American the football States, over here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they, they gave them uh, the second floor of this – nightclub kind of thing heck yeah we were up there and for maybe 20 minutes it was like a middle school dance our guys their guys i wouldn't say 20 minutes and then all of a sudden boy it was you know a lot of good times together (laughs) that is incredible um and then we went uh some of the the players went till uh about closing time or so close to it two o'clock yeah because the bus was departing for the airport at 2 30 so (laughs) Yeah, they all made it. No problems. Again, no problems. I'm like, this is unbelievable. 
That is that might have been a stroke of luck right uh-huh. there. Yeah, Very that much was so. that was and great. the coaches were yeah. all there. <laughs> <laughs> that's who you're more worried about. That's yeah. the question, right? But no, that that trip and everything is just that's what's so special about you know the group yeah. that you have here and, and all of that. But we'll go. I guess we'll go back to last year and then talk um, to close it off, talking into this fall. You know, and kind of yeah. you know moving in that direction. But let's let's talk last year, right? Um, the playoff run. You, you mm-hmm. win your second conference title. You know, you go back to back and you go into this playoff run. And we, I mentioned the Mount Union win earlier, which is obviously a monument, monumental one in your career and in this yeah. program's history. Like there's something mm-hmm. like that of that nature has not been done by many programs uh, across D3 no. football. No, they're the standard, right? It, I mean. yeah, it, it absolutely is. I mean, they, and it's for good reason, right? Because yep. they've earned that reputation. And so for you guys to go do that. Was that playoff run, was that a blur? Was it in slow motion? Was it something in between? And, and what did you learn from your standpoint? You're not a spring chicken in this profession anymore, but uh, I think you'd be the first person to say you still have a lot of things to learn and all the great oh, coaches do. You better. Uh, what, did you, what did you learn through that process with these guys? Yeah, I think it was very helpful having the year before, right? Yeah. Like anything, okay. The year before was much more of – there's a lot more regulations with playoffs, you know, and the roster yep. and getting, getting the win down over to, Mount St. Joseph and then right. making it to the second round is a yep. big, you know, getting yep. a win under your belt probably prepared you guys. <clears throat> yes. And then uh, you got to prepare a 58 man roster, which yeah. stinks. Uh, it's awful. Um, Cause we'll play as many that we feel absolutely can help contribute. I mean, we'll consistently play in the low seventies okay. every single game. Um, one game this past year, we played, uh, 98. Wow. I mean, we're going to do it, right? We can wow. get you in. We're going to play. and um, But now we are limited to 58. Anyways, so that allowed, I think, for me anyways, there's a little bit more familiarity. And and I think you see that quite a bit with, with teams. They get there one year. They don't make it. The next year they advance, right? Mm-hmm. Because they, they've been there once before and they're feeling more comfortable. Um as for the players, I'm you know I'm not too sure. I I would think that that helps, yeah, right? For sure. Um, and I I think this year, this past year, excuse me, you know we had talked all year of the year before people, and I know that people thought ah that was the f- you know fluke year of the Scots, right? And mm-hmm. um, like congrats, you guys have made yeah good job, bud. You've but, made, if we're going back to like your climb analogy, right? Like I think a lot of people on the outside might've thought that was your summit. Yeah. Right. If they, is that a right, yep. the right way of putting Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And, uh, but internally you guys knew that that was just another stop along the way. No, now we've got the target on the back, right? And, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and that's where you want it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so we talked about continuing to stay hungry and, um, and, and the motto was hunt right. Uh, last year. Um, so going into the playoffs then, yep. That was where that was that was the I don't want to say ten and zero in, in a, a conference champion. That is absolutely a oh goal. of course absolutely. Yeah. But now go one A or one B, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Playoff time. This is now we want to embrace. And there's something about that second win, right? Because that second win, now you oh the lights are uh, you know. Two more, and we're in the finals. Yeah, like you're almost at that halfway in the, in the playoffs type thing, and that's a long season, man. That's oh, physical. Absolutely. Guys are beat up. Um, I think that's part of playoff success is who's <laughs> who's know, healthy. Yeah, who's healthy. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and then how'd you train your body back in in September, October to be ready for that? You know, position yeah. in in December. So. Um, you know, but obviously going down to Mount Union and, you know, I loved our guys' approach. There was – I heard it too many times of, Coach, you, you know, be careful. You're going to be down 14 nothing before your guys realize that they can play. But the ooh, the ah. And uh, our guys came in ready to play. And, man, our defense battled. Yeah, they did. Battled and, and kept us in it and only down 10-0 after three. Mm-hmm. And then I think that was the again that was the eye opener for a lot of people who aren't, weren't familiar maybe with with those squads and just kind of know general D three football. It's like, wait, we're going into four. This is a ball game. Like this is yeah, yeah. this is they haven't carried this one away yet, right? So yeah. let's uh, yeah, let's maybe slow our roll here. That's that's an incredible an incredible feat. That last yeah. play, 
what do you call, you call it? The pop heard around the world. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let me let you in on a couple of things. Okay. I, I, I don't know if Carter told you all these. I know you've interviewed him before. Um, it's the only time he's ever flipped a call. So the numbers and the and the name of the play, he flipped the numbers, and most everybody up front went, that doesn't fit with okay. Tebow. I yeah, mean, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> you give the guy credit. Yep. Right? And so um, most blocked it that Tebow way, but there were – uh. There was one running back in particular went to the opposite, but picked up a kid coming off the edge. And it just worked out that way. And uh, and then our tight end um, talking with him on the that caught it. He, he told me on the way home, he's like, if that ball was six inches higher, it would have been completely in the sun. And as it was, I was almost just catching a shadow, um, and not. You know that's not yeah. something that went in the heat of that moment. You look okay. Where's the where's the sun at? Do we want? No way. <laughs> After all that, this entire right. ball game, the emotions are riding yeah. high. Yeah. If anyone's thinking about that, they need to get their brain checked. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that is real. Yeah. No. I mean, all the the stars seem to align for that one. And yeah. And then our defense you, though had to yeah. go out for two plays because that really wasn't the. I say it was the thirteen end seconds. It's left, the one right? that you guys remember, of course. But the defense had to go out and finish the deal. Yeah. How did you guys handle that and the, and the success that came with that? Now, obviously, you didn't go on and win the entire thing. But what did you feel like the response was like from your guys after it? And and rightfully so, well, they should have been. I tell you, our alums. I, I I think about a five hour ride home, maybe. And I think four and a half of it was just texting back, thank you, go Scots. Thank you, go Scots. Like, you get that thing on copy you know, and paste. <laughs> a little bit. Um, but, uh, I mean, they were so excited. That's incredible, yeah. And then getting the videos, it, this was fun. I had some players, um, their parents videoed them and their son watching the game and their reactions, you know, Brought tears, right? That's like awesome. Yeah, that's how great. that impacted, you know, that the Scots community, not just not just that team. Mm-hmm. Um, my message after after the game was, it was you know, um, thankfully it was recorded because there are some things like oh my gosh, you're out yeah. of mind, right? And it's, uh, it's an out of body experience. Yeah, man. you black but, out almost. But if if you come together, you know, with your with the guys that you love. And you've put the work in with you can you can achieve some great things and um, and it's true right I mean uh, these guys never gave up and they they love playing for the the person next to them across from them oh yeah right they hate them in practice but yeah. they love them on Saturday that's yeah that's how it is that's so. exactly I play with all kinds of guys like that and that's what you want I mean that's absolutely yep. what you want. so I won't take up too much more of your time we'll all finish right. going on talking about this fall right 2024 this upcoming season yep. you guys talked about it earlier a lot of expectations coming into this one because of the success and you've earned that target right you've earned the target on your back going into this fall um, preseason scrimmage against <laughs> NAI squad in Michigan here in Lawrence Tech and then you don't pull any punches right out of the gate, right, with a River Falls team no. coming in that uh, is going to be a top 25 matchup, and you keep that thing rolling. You go up to Northern Michigan, the D2 opponent. Like, I'm saying a lot right now, but just in a long way of saying you guys are preparing yourselves for the long run here and for the end game and, and not pulling any punches in these these early couple weeks here for 24. Right. So, yeah, I mean, River Falls top 25 team. We have Denison week two. They're yeah. a very strong program yep. in their conference. Uh, up to Northern for a Division two, a crossover type game. Their homecoming. I mean, um, and then we come back and open up conference play against Hope. There you go. Who's, you know. Yeah, that's. Become a rival. And, I was going to say, and that was kind of the. And a battle. So you know, between them and I know the Albion game, obviously we've talked, you know, yeah. awesome about between you and I, but like that, that hope game has become one too. That is, man, yep. that, that becomes a, a stingy affair. Like that's <laughs> something that, you know what I mean? That's a, that's quite the, uh, quite the battle. So we, we will, and then we have Calvin, which I say, yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't watched them yet. Right. <laughs> they haven't Not many played have. a game yet. Yeah. Um, so we are going to be ready for the bye week after that for yeah. sure. You know, yeah. um, the key is going to be, you know, who, how many can are be ready to step up in those early games. Um, in years past, we've been fortunate that a um, few guys didn't play much in the second yeah. half, right? Yeah. But now to give us depth so that 
um, maybe the number ones, you can't take every rep, right? Um, our linebackers, running backs, so forth, they can't just get that physically yeah. pounding. Uh, I don't know what officials, uh, officiating team's going to get that week one, but I hear they're I, not here. I know they're as you know fast tempo as we are. Man, that could be. Somebody, they're going to be dropping some yeah. LBs, those officials running up they and down are. that field. Top so. gun offense. That's it's going to be, over there. It's gonna be crazy. That's good against good. That's great against great. Oh, it's um, going to be so much fun. I'm excited about that one. That'll be really exciting. But talk about, um, we've talked about the climb. We've talked about the hunt. What is the, what is the mantra? What is the, the message going into uh 24 season? So, um, it's, it's chop is the okay. word, right? Um, acronym. Uh, yes, we're big on it. I know. I figure, I, I've here. learned that. I've learned that quickly here. Like, yes. Uh, well, you know, so kilt style is never going away. Yep. Um, but we felt in 22, this team needed a little more identity. So our goal is always what, what do we, what are we looking for out of this team? Yeah. And these whiteboards all around here are just filled with adjectives and what we want to see our team. And so um, this year um, with CHOP, courage, right? Um, have courage to, to, you know, get up in the morning and to, to wake a teammate up and to go lift. And, you know, courage can be courage can be used many different ways, oh, yeah. right? Um, H is fun, right? Uh, H is havoc. Okay. Like, let's, wow. let's create havoc. Mm-hmm. You react to chaos, which I think, you know, um, but you inflict, in my opinion, havoc. So our offense, defense, special teams, let's create some havoc, man. Yeah. Let's let's be explosive. Let's fly around. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because when you're when you're not reckless, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you're flying, you know, good things are gonna happen. So and also I think that then helps you when some adversity does come your way. You're able to adapt to it, so yeah. Hey, River, goes back to River failure. Falls going right? to give us a, oh, a run, right? Absolutely. And that's so. There's going to be situations where, whether they connect or they stop us or however we, you want to spin the adversity, how do you? How are we going to respond to it? So it goes um, all the way back to how we started the conversation with failure and, yep. and learning from that and and giving these guys, yep. you know, providing them with opportunities to fail in practice in everyday life so that when it comes to Saturday or when it comes to a big time moment in 15, 20 years for them yeah. and they fail, how do they react to that? Yeah. Right. And that's just Saturday is again, is a microcosm of that and other things in life. And that's what football is, right. It carries yeah. on, but um, I'll let you, let me let yeah. you finish the acronym yeah. though. It's okay right. interjecting. So, uh, o is, is one, one can be used one more, one more win, one okay. more rep. Yeah. Play as one, be one. Right. Um, and then P is passion. And that's as strong of a you know word and, and feeling like love of kilt style that you can have. You play with passion. Ooh, right. You do things with passion. You know, you're going to put way more into it. And uh, so uh, I also made a play with, um, you know, um, Abraham Lincoln. You know, if you give me six hours to, to chop down that tree, I'm going to spend four of it you know, preparing, um, sharpening. So we'll do that with chop. Like, okay. hey, right now we're sharpening. That's pretty good. I like that. Right? Yeah. Um, so come game time, it's going to be time to chop. Yeah. Right? That lasts two hours. Yeah. That's so, it. So, um, yeah, um, that's where we decided on these acronyms and, and try to really center it around what we see as coaches. And we do this, you know, right around new year's um and guys come back and now they're waiting they're like oh what's what's the word man what's yeah what's the risk because yeah because you're a couple year years into this now too and they understand what comes with oh, yeah, that and, because and last bought- year they thought it was like climb higher you know yeah <laughs> just like no we already did climb the sequel <laughs> yeah yeah that's great so they didn't give you enough credit and you know what i think they were the biggest critics uh of hunt like what what's hunt and then but then you you explain heart and you know um, that then they are like yes this is us yeah right yeah and, and so um, when we when we pitch chop to the guys I'm sure this time they were a little more okay yeah but we explain and before, you know yeah. we'll meet from time to time we talk about well what you know what does courage mean to you and 
to be a scout. And That's important, right? Because you can you can throw out buzzwords all day long, oh, yeah. but unless you have those yep. conversations, like what does this mean and how does it apply to us? Yeah. Then the word's uh, just a word. The yeah. acronym is just an acronym. So the first week we're in camp, um, my leadership group is going to have a letter, right? And so they're up that day. I'm not talking. You're talking. Oh, I yeah. Encourage. Love that. I What's love it that. mean to you guys? Not me. Right? So mm -hmm. um, that's part of the foundation, player-led program. Yes, Once sir. you get guys, they're talking, you're like, whoa, hmm, I didn't, I think I said that once. And now they are. It's <laughs> like, dang. They do listen. As a coach, they yes. As a coach, those victories are, those yeah. got to feel great. Awesome. Coach, that's all I've got for you, man. Thank hey. you so much. You're First of all, you're a pro. I think above all else is when it comes to like being on camera. So, microphone, so when I retire, I can come be your sidekick. Maybe I would be honored. Okay. You would be the man to yeah. have. So, but it also just like, I'd need a catchphrase or something very right? much in the way of like, you talked about recruiting and how the recruiting for you guys in person versus over zoom is so much different. If I could do every one of my interviews like this, <laughs> the show would be 10 times better. I, I, the fact that I'm able to sit with you and have these conversations is incredible to me. And so, all right. So it's not lost on me. If it works out, I want to be in the studio, uh, what is that, September 20th, Sounds right? right. Night, yeah. be night before the game, and uh, I want to see your, your pad and all that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Awesome, Thank buddy. you so much, Coach. Thank you. I appreciate you. Don't hurt me with the ring. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I had to wear it for the show, you know. Let's go try on some kills. <laughs> Let's do some kills. <laughs>